In this video, we're going to be looking at the relationship between an angle subtended at the centre of a circle and an angle subtended at the circumference of a circle, both from the same arc. Now, before we get started, just remember that if you're having a bit of trouble or you don't understand something in the video, feel free to pause it and go over the bits you don't understand. So, as you can see, here we have a circle. And this blue bit here is called an arc, which is just a portion of the circle's circumference. We have the points B and C, and A, which is the middle of the circle. Now, an arc can define an angle at the centre of a circle when the two ends of the arc are joined at this point. Just like this, and we get an angle. Now, an arc can also define another point at the circumference of a circle when the two ends of the arc are joined up at this point, just like this. Now, the really cool thing about this point is that no matter where you move it, the angle still stays the same, as long as it's somewhere on the circumference. Now, if you increase the size of the arc, the size of the angles also increase. And if you decrease the size of the arc, the size of the angles decrease as well. So what we're going to do today is prove that this angle here, subtended at the centre of the circle, is always exactly double the size of the angle subtended at the circumference of the circle. Now, the way we first start off this proof is by labelling these two angles. So we'll call this angle at the top here, we'll call it S for small because it's a smaller angle, and then we'll call this angle down here B because it's the bigger angle. Now the next thing we have to do is, is actually split this funny looking shape, I guess it's a bit like the Star Trek symbol, into two triangles. And the way we do that is by drawing a straight line through that shape, like this. Now, because we split up this, this shape into two triangles, we've also got to split up the angle into two sets of angles as well. So, we'll get rid of those labels that we did, just for now. We'll come back to having them as S and B. But, we will also relabel these angles. So, what we'll do is, We'll call this angle at the top left S, S1. We'll call this one S2. Then we'll call this one B1. And then this one will be B2. Now, something that my teacher told me to do when I was first learning about circle proofs is that you just got to look at the shape and see if you can recognize anything at all, even if it's really small, because that will get the process started and then you can go on to find other things about triangles in the shape as well. So, so we're going to take a look at these two side lengths, this one here and this one here, because they both actually happen to be the same size. And we know this because they both start in the middle here at A, and they both hit the circumference, which, which firstly means that they're both the same size, and also that they're just radii because they're both half the diameter of the circle. So this makes this triangle here an isosceles triangle because it has two side lengths that are exactly the same. Now the special thing about an isosceles triangle is that firstly they both have two side lengths that are the same, and that the angles opposite these two side lengths are also the same. So that means we can now call this angle down here S1 as well, because it's opposite the side length, which is the same. And now another thing we know about triangles is that all of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So what we can do is we can actually now call this angle, we'll call it alpha, We'll call that alpha, and now we can start writing out some equations on the side here. So, we figured out that S1 plus another S1 
but we'll just write 2s1. 2s1 plus alpha equals 180 degrees. And remember that's because all of the angles in a, in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And we, if we look at this again, we can actually draw up another equation because we know that the angle of a straight line is 180 degrees. So below this equation, we can write alpha plus B1 equals 180 degrees. Now if you look here, you'll see that we have two simultaneous equations. And we can solve these equations through substitution because both of these equations equal 180 degrees. So we can now write 2s1 plus alpha equals alpha plus B1. Now if you look at both sides of this equation, you can see that both sides have alpha. So what we'll do is we'll take away alpha from both sides and then we'll get the equation 2s1 equals b1 and we'll just draw a nice big square around it just to break it all off okay now if we repeated these steps that we just did here on this triangle for this triangle we'd actually get a very similar equation the equation we would get is 2s2 equals b2. Now what we should do is we should actually label these angles like how we labeled them before. So I'll just draw a big line there and I'll call this s again. And I'll do the same here. And we'll call this b again. And we'll take a look at b first. So if you can just look at this here, we know that B equals B1 plus B2. And now if you look at the, the work we did before, you can see that we've already got B1 and B2 in two other places. So we can therefore write that B equals 2 S1 plus 2S2. So now we can actually simplify this equation by taking the 2 out the front. So then we would get B equals 2 and then brackets S1 plus S2. Now if we take a look at S we know that S equals S equals S1 plus S2 and that's because S is comprised of little angles S1 and S2. Now if we have a look at this equation here we can actually substitute S right here. So we would get the equation B equals 2s and that's true because we know that this angle here 120 degrees is double of this angle here which is 60 degrees so what we've done is we successfully proved that an angle subtended at the center of a circle is always exactly double the size of an angle subtended at the circumference of a circle when both angles are subtended by the same arc